Eventually, you know, it, it became clear that what, what the biggest, one of the biggest problems was the framework within which all this sort of the crime conversation was happening and how often that ended up um, or even just began by sort of pigeonholing positions as being tough or being, you know, getting tough, being soft, that kind of polemic. It, what struck me uh, was the need to sort of reframe the discussion because that wasn't what was really happening um, as a result of this sort of 30-year mass incarceration um, uh, approach we've been taking. And uh, at some point, it became evident to me that if we made a change, we were, uh, to me, it was about data. That is, to start a new framework, you needed to have new information and be able to put it, you know, in a, put it forward in a way that helped people reframe their uh, perspectives. And after thinking about crime mapping, it started to occur to, to me that um, if we mapped where people lived who were going in and out of prison rather than where crime was happening, that would shift the focus onto a dimension of reality that had not been looked at seriously, um, at least in any really empirical way. Um, so we started to collect uh, home addresses. Um, because we did a lot of research with New York State, um, one of the times we asked for uh, uh, data that we often asked for um, we, we also asked them to start attaching the um, home addresses of folks being admitted to prison. And I think most people will be able to say, oh, look, how highly concentrated um, uh, uh, imprisonment is in particular neighborhoods. Even more sort of compellingly put into maps, which are so easy to understand. We hadn't seen that dimension of the correctional reality um, uh, put out there, either empirically or compellingly. So we started to make maps. Um, we started with Brooklyn. We made a map of um, the, you know, the per thousand per capita rates of incarceration um, by, you know, we, we had the street address. So we were able to aggregate up to blocks and block groups and tracts and neighborhoods and so on. And the pictures were, of course, astounding. They really immediately um, captured people's uh, imagination and, and helped them rethink their understanding. Because what struck us when we really started to look at this was that even though we continue to talk about and conceive of the justice system as a kind of individual case-by-case -case arbiter, the effect of all those cumulative decisions geographically was far from sort of an individual-by-individual -individual case. They were highly grouped and concentrated in particular neighborhoods, and even more so than crime. That is, when we compared the density of uh, crime in a, in a place to the low, the highest to the lowest, let's say in community districts in New York, we found something like, um, uh, you know, the highest was 10 times higher than the lowest. But when we compared incarceration rates across those same districts, we found results that were more like 20 and 25 times higher, the highest to the lowest. So we were also showing that incarceration was this, was even much denser a phenomenon than than crime itself. And that makes sense because people tend to leave their neighborhoods and acquisitive crime takes place outside um, under-resourced places. So again, that was somewhat anecdotally known, but not put down empirically. Um, and what it did is it helped us to, re to sort of recast our understanding of the system's effects as a large-scale population displacement and resettlement um, effect. That is, that perhaps on, on a geographic um, level and over time was the most startling result um, of the system. That is, it was moving thousands of mainly parenting working-aged men from very small particular areas in, in, in every city and then returning them after on average between two and four uh, years. And so it was that kind of grinding, churning uh, population, emigration, immigration that was going on in very particular neighborhoods year after year that we started to see and wanted to start to portray because it portrayed a different kind of story. Because we always wanted to think about this in terms of what it suggested about opportunities, not just um, what the problems were. Uh, so the first thing that, of course, struck us was that there's, in some ways, you could think of it as an economy of scale opportunity. So that if you were to focus uh, responses on places rather than, as we used to say, places rather than cases, you could get a bigger bang for your investment, so to speak, because you can affect a lot of things 
um, a lot of conditions, a lot of people, uh, et cetera, um, by focusing in a high incarceration neighborhood. 